just so maybe learn is going to Hello and welcome to Inside Jacksonville, a production of the University of North Florida's School of Communication and the CW17. I'm Deja Borden. We're here each month with stories about life on the First Coast. Up first this month, We Rock the Spectrum is an open gym facility that takes learning to a whole new level. Inside Jacksonville's Lauren Sapp shows us what makes this gym so special. In 2016, certified behavior analysts Marissa Chun and Leah Wells turned their years of experience working with kids with special needs, such as autism, to create an environment emphasizing the physical side of communication. The result? We rock the spectrum. Our goal is inclusion. We want everybody to play with each other and learn from each other and um, you know, promote that everybody can play together. Everybody plays and um, everybody can play differently, um, they can communicate differently and that doesn't mean that we can't play together. Aiden, a nonverbal child, and his mother Aubrey are frequent visitors of the gym. We are here every day. Um, my son now uh, has been taught through Rock the Spectrum how to communicate non-verbally with the PECS program on his iPad. So we are able to communicate with him and he's able to convey to us what he wants. Through the inclusive environment, Marissa and Leah provide life-changing services for kids of all ages and all abilities while the kids are having fun. So do you like coming to kids' gym? Yes. Yes? What do you like best about coming to kids' gym? You like all the boys and girls? Yes. Yes? There's a bunch of kids everywhere. There's a bunch of kids everywhere? Yes. At We Rock the Spectrum Kids Gym, finally a place where you never have to say I'm sorry. Kids and families get the chance to build lifelong relationships, and the owners get a chance to see the families grow. The impact on those families' lives and the comfort that they could find in others um, that was just you know facilitated here it, it made the whole mission worth it because we could see the change in them and the change in their kids because everybody found you know support in that in which for kiddos um, and families with children with special needs sometimes it's, they feel kind of lonely and um, that they don't have somebody else like them to help them out so I think that's really great. The aim is to create a specialized active environment with a variety of physical activities for kids to experience. Swings, a trampoline, and a popular attraction the zip line. And we can um, take them away from the structured, you know, table setting where we're very sedentary for longer amounts of time and put them in this environment where we're, you know, teaching them while we're jumping in the trampoline with them. We're modeling healthy lifestyles and physical activity, we're promoting it, and we're teaching them different ways to express themselves. At the end of your visit, you always have the chance to come back the next day to see what other kinds of fun are in store. Lauren Sapp, Inside Jacksonville. The experiences these kids walk away with when the fun is over last a lifetime. Sweet Theory Bakery is the perfect place to stop by if you're crazy, craving sweets but have a food allergy. Inside Jacksonville's Eric Benitez takes us to this majority gluten-free pastry shop. Sweet Theory is a local bakery located on King Street in the Riverside area. They're an incredibly allergy-friendly bakery that excludes the use of egg, dairy, and peanut from all of their products. While also having several gluten-free options, Sweet Theory does well in never compromising the taste in their desserts. We aim to open up a place that uh, everyone could come to um, so that everyone had an option, whether you have food allergies or dietary preferences, or if you don't at all everyone can come together and eat the same food. Since 2012, Sweet Theory has been making goods like cinnamon rolls, donuts, and biscuit sandwiches. Gluten is one of the most common food allergies, and luckily the majority of Sweet Theory's items are gluten-free. These include loaf cakes, cupcakes, cookies, brownies, and more. The best part of, uh, of this job and like any kind of customer interaction I've had is when there are children coming in who have never been able to just look at a case and pick something out. 
It's a very special moment. I've had many mothers cry and just like take pictures and everything and it's a very special moment. Sweet Theory is passionate about never selling day old goods. They make and bake all of their items daily to ensure the highest quality product. Because of this, goods may sell out as the day goes on, so customers are best served by coming in early. Eggs and dairy aren't necessarily needed to make good desserts. Some alternative ingredients Sweet Theory uses are applesauce, flax meal, and apple cider vinegar to keep the taste customers love. A family friend of mine recommended it to me. I uh, just had to try it out one day. I love coffee and donuts. The people inside are re really nice and friendly. Uh, Rachel, the manager, always says hi. And and serves me with a great smile. It's a safe place for them to come where they don't have to worry about um, even asking if something has an, uh, an ingredient in it that they can't have. So I think that that peace of mind is what people really, really appreciate the most. Eric Benitez, Inside Jacksonville. If you are looking to try something new, stop by Sweet Theory to satisfy your sweet tooth. The Walrus is a Beatles-themed bar serving up vegan eats and drinks. Inside Jacksonville's Casey Bachelor takes us along for a bright and music-filled experience. If you're walking down Murray Hill's Edgewood Avenue, there's a good chance you've seen the bright and fun exterior of the Walrus. The Walrus is an eclectic Beatles-themed bar serving up vegan eats, cocktails, juices, and smoothies. Adorned with hand-painted murals of the Beatles, the walrus has quickly become a local dive staple amongst the community. They designed this, and then um, we're like, yes, we love it. And then with Lily, she's like a huge like Beatles nut, so we're like, yes, we're going with it. So we pretty much like elaborate on that and just uh, made it grow from that. Aside from serving up vegan eats and drinks, the walrus also hosts shows for local musicians and bands. They also host open mic comedy nights every Wednesday. My name's Lily. We do juices and smoothies that you can add booze to. We have um, some vegan sandwiches. We have soup and um, beer and wine. The walls on the walrus are all hand painted with cool designs and also references to the Beatles. Tucked away in the back, the walrus also has arcade games and a pool table. All of their drinks are made in-house and fresh. Here, Lily is making me a drink called Dizzy Miss Lizzie. It has butterfly pea flower tea, pineapple, lime, and mint. If you're looking to venture out to a new bar or you're just a Beatles fan, the Walrus is more than happy to have you. Casey Bachelor, Inside Jacksonville. This hotspot takes Beatles lovers back in time to an atmosphere that helps the community come together. Coming up, we'll drop the needle on the rebirth of the turntable. Also after the break, it's time to take flight without heading to the airport. Hang on, Inside Jacksonville will be right back. Welcome back to Inside Jacksonville. In Riverside, there's a store turning something that once was forgotten into something brand new. Inside Jacksonville's Bella Casapau takes us from the digital age and brings us along on an old school musical journey. Tiger Records is a place for music lovers to explore stacks upon stacks of old and new vinyl. Customers are bound to find something special. Roughly 75% of the shop's records are used, and members right here in the community help keep the shelves stocked. We're like always chasing down collections. Like sometimes we'll buy like four records off a person, and sometimes we'll buy, you know, literally 5,000 records off a person. Buying vinyl online may not be as gratifying as pursuing a local record store, where shopping can turn into a treasure hunt. A good record store, I think, creates a good ambiance, right? Like, I think it smells nice, and the sound system is good, and the people are polite, and I think that it, like, is a comfortable place to be. And that whole experience is super fun. And I think the best way to shop for records is not necessarily looking for a specific record, but but browsing until you find something that you know you like or maybe that's just interesting. One thing is certain, Tiger Records is a community space to share one's love for music with everyone. The community you build inside the store, the culture you build inside the store. So talking about music is a big deal. I've gone into record stores and it's, and it's just, there's nobody talking. 
and it seems like it's missing something. My favorite thing is when I'm just standing there pricing records, and I hear like two strangers or two acquaintances get in some like kind of nerdy music debate about who's better, the Cure or the Smiths, or whatever. You know, like some like almost cliche like thing, and it's super fun. 2021 was one of the best years for vinyl in decades. This resurgence raises the question, is vinyl on a comeback? Young people make up a big slice of the sales pie, with nearly 50% of vinyl buyers under the age of 35. There's almost a new wave of nostalgic music that they're making to feel like it was from the 70s and the 80s. New technology might give listeners unlimited options, but vinyl offers people a chance to slow down and appreciate the noise. When you listen to an album in context, rather than just streaming a digital song, I get so much more out of the whole experience than just listening to that one song. And that's why I love vinyl. Stop by your local record store for good vibes and good times. Bella Casapow, Inside Jacksonville. Looks like vinyl is making a comeback, and record stores are a great place to hunt for some oldies but goodies. Cup of Job is a local coffee shop, coffee shop inspired by the Christian faith. The co business works to better the lives of those in need. Inside Jacksonville's Haley Jones shows us what the faith-based shop has to offer. Local coffee shop Cup of Job serves the community of Jack's Beach more than just coffee. Just one block away from the ocean, all are welcome to drop in for a snack after a day at the beach, a quick latte on the way to work, or to meet up with friends to study and chat. Cup of Job began with an idea to share the Christian faith within the shared context of coffee. The faith-based business strives to foster a welcoming environment of coffee, community, connections, and Christ. Here you can really make a connection with like the people behind the counter and the people who are ordering from you. I mean, you come in here and you're just reminded of, like, you listen to the music and you look at the items on the menu and it's all kind of, um, all from the Bible and all very um, based off of Jesus. Cup of Job is a ministry outreach of LifeWork Leadership, a global organization that aims to equip workplace leaders to lead by faith. They believed that forming these personal relationships was key to living out their mission statement, transforming leaders, transforming cities, transforming the world. Visitors can choose from a wide variety of drinks, sandwiches, and pastry items on the menu. Each section of the menu, like the shop's name, references a verse and creates opportunities for conversations of faith. Cup of Job might be known for its coffee and beachside service, but an important part of their outreach is to employ people from our local rescue mission. Donations received are passed on to provide support and, of course, coffee to people in need. Cup of Job has helped change the lives of volunteers like William Ezzo. It's gotten me to the point where I was able to, they helped me rebuild my credit to the point where I'm able to have, obtain a house out here at Jack's Beach to the point where it helped me go further in my career and what I want to do in life. For William, working at Cup of Job has changed the way he sees people and his own faith. Not everyone's self-centered to the point where we are more closer as a family, knowing that we're all forgiven, no matter what we've done in our life. Haley Jones, Inside Jacksonville. Cup of Job serves up coffee while also serving to better their community. iFly is a place that gives you an opportunity to cross something off your bucket list. Inside Jacksonville's Dylan Kelly introduces us to a safer and easier alternative to jumping out of a plane. iFly is an indoor skydiving facility located off Brightman Boulevard in Jacksonville. Some customers like to come over and fly after a round of top golf right next door. Actual skydivers who are interested in practicing their skill will go and fly in the tunnel before going and jumping out of a plane. A first time flyer before they enter the tunnel will first head over to the gear up station where they will get a suit, a helmet, and a pair of goggles. That person will then enter one of the classrooms where one of the instructors will go over hand signals and how to properly fly in the tunnel. Indoor skydiving is an experience for all ages. Whether you're 6 or 80 years old, you can go and fly in the tunnel. In the tunnel, there is a net at the bottom for support. 
and each strand can hold up to about 3,000 pounds. The tunnel itself is 14 feet across and 65 feet from the net to the roof. The way the wind tunnel works is the two fans at the top of the tunnel pushes the wind down through the cooling towers on the side of the building, comes through the plenum, and then pushes through the metal vanes at the bottom which redirects the wind upwards. We have here in the tunnel is the wind's a constant wind speed, right? In the sky, if I change my body position, I'm naturally going to accelerate to whatever amount of surface area I'm providing for the wind, you know, based on my mass. Here, the wind's constant. So if I accelerate, instead of flying, I'm just going to come down to the net. So the wind speed staying the same, I'm just coming down to the net instead of holding level. So that's kind of the big difference. Like you have to fly to the wind here, where in the sky, you do whatever you want, you're just gonna to accelerate to that body position. Well, we're the only place like this in the city for one. And where could you go to say that you did indoor skydiving? And I guarantee you, majority of the people that you know would never have tried it. I've never skydived. I've never done anything like this before. So it was definitely not exactly what I thought it was, but uh, it was an interesting sensation. I thought it would be a bit, bit more like a roller coaster than it was, but it was, it was kind of a, it was more of like a static float rather than a, than a, a falling sensation. So it was cool. Dylan Kelly, Inside Jacksonville. If you're interested in picking up a new hobby or want to conquer your fear of heights, indoor skydiving might be for you. Coming up, sweet treats that hit the spot and make a difference in the community. Plus, we're climbing the walls. Chalk up and grab hold. You're watching Inside Jacksonville on CW17. Welcome back to Inside Jacksonville. Rock climbing can be a great way to spend time with friends and family and burn some calories. Inside Jacksonville's Ben Guthrie takes us up the wall to show us a close-knit climbing community. Outdoor rock climbing isn't a Florida specialty. In fact, it's practically non-existent, and the closest place to outdoor climb is a long drive away. And yet, you don't need the drive for hours on end to climb thanks to indoor rock climbing gyms such as Stone Climbing located in St. Augustine. Indoor climbing isn't one-to-one -one with outdoor climbing. When you're climbing outside, everything's on on the route, right? If you can reach it, you can use it, whereas inside we color code the holds so that you know which holds you can grab, and it's clear and obvious which holds you can grab. Outside, it's not so clear and obvious. But that hasn't stopped this sport from growing in the state of Florida. Rock climbing in Florida exists thanks to gyms like Stone Climbing. And while it may be tough due to how far away the mountains are, it hasn't stopped the state from having its own climbing community. In Florida, going to the mountains is more of an excursion than a daily routine, and Stone Climbing manager James Sellers is well aware of that obstacle. I would say the challenges are uh, probably getting excited to go outside and climbing and, uh, you know, just uh, not necessarily having the time to make it outside as often. Um, but because of that, it does get me more excited for when I do get to plan a trip in the future. But it's that challenge of distance that gives Florida a unique climbing community. The Florida climbing community is definitely very interesting. Uh, there's kind of two sides to it. Uh, I found the community to be very welcoming um, and very like accepting of newer people. But a lot of times I've noticed in the climbing community, uh, especially in Florida, people really care about uh, grades and how hard they're climbing, all of this stuff. The distance is what motivates some climbers to train hard, but many still enjoy going to the gym for the climbing and the atmosphere, regardless of the outdoors. No matter how the climbing community approaches the gym, however, they are the reason for this place's existence. I don't believe any gym in Florida or in the U.S. would exist without a strong community. Um, I think that's part of what makes climbing so special is that uh, people come in here not just to climb, but to spend time with their friends that a lot of them have made in the gym, um, as well as friends from outside of the gym too. Climbing gyms aren't just a place to hang out though. For some, it's a bridge to outdoor climbing, as well as a place to train and learn how to safely and effectively climb real rocks. You can gain strength and footwork and technique inside. Um, you can learn you know, how to use ropes and tie knots and be safe inside. Um, but then when you go outside, it's, it's always a little bit different. You can't fully recreate that inside. So whether it be a gateway to the outdoors or simply a way to hang out with friends and climb in this flat state, rock climbing gyms have offered this vertical sport a home in Florida. Benjamin Guthrie, Inside Jacksonville.
stone climbing offers an alternative to outdoor climbing for those looking to hang loose. Cookies and Cream is the perfect place to grab a delicious late night snack. While serving irresistible treats, the shop provides a welcoming environment for customers. Inside Jacksonville's Cat Barber takes us into the locally owned shop. Ray and Jen Enzenbacher have been baking Jacksonville a better place since 2019. Their ice cream shop, Cookies and Cream, is currently located at the corner of North 13th Avenue in Jacksonville Beach and has been a hit ever since opening night. After being unable to find a business that cared about building bonds with their customers and the community around them, they decided to create their own. Jen has always loved making homemade cookies, so Ray decided to learn how to make ice cream. Together, their wide variety of creative flavor combinations has quickly gained a cult following in the community. It's cool. We do. We have a lot of repeat customers. It's a lot of fun. We've seen babies grow up. You know, we've been here for two and a half years. They come here as an infant, and now they're two and a half years old. It's just amazing. It's really cool. Many locals have made it a part of their weekly routine to stop by for a treat and say hello to their favorite dessert makers. Cool, you know, you're, not, you're never going to come and it be the same thing. You know, if you have a favorite, then you're going to be able to get it. But if uh, you don't, you know, they, like I said, they change it up and it makes it fun. Giving back to the community has been an important goal for both Ray and Jen, who have raised over $10,000 for charitable causes within the first two and a half years of opening their business. The Enzenbachers have supported causes such as the Wounded Warrior Foundation, the Girl Scouts, and more through their business. I think that the biggest thing is to, um, to give when you can. And, and there's, there's not many chances that I have that I can't. I, I give, that's all I do. I, I can't bring myself not to be able to help I, and to just give what I can. Because I promise you, when you give, it, it comes back 10 times full. It always does. Thank you, sir. Most Thank evenings, you, you can find the couple running their shop alongside local students, helping the Jacksonville community one late night snack at a time. Cat Barber, Inside Jacksonville. Well, that's a wrap for this edition of Inside Jacksonville. If you missed anything from today's program, just visit our website, unftv.com, and look under the journal Digital Journalism tab, where you'll find expanded versions of our stories, photos, interviews, and other extras. Again, that's unftv.com. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at InsideJacksUNF. From all of us here at Inside Jacksonville, Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next month right here on The CW17.